Hi, this is Igor and I'm on chess.com. I'm going to seek a 3 minute game. I just did so, but my opponent didn't show up, so I restarted. But yeah, I've been more interested in, uh, you know, posting nice games, historical games on my channel recently. I mean, those take more time, but in general they seem to get you know, more response than the live blitz videos, but there are tons of people who like the live blitz, so I'll keep to that. Um, this looks like a really strong player, 2476. Um, okay, I was a little worried when he took some time on move three, but okay, now things are moving along. In this line, I like to play knight c6. Most likely he'll play b4, so I'm ready for that. So, yeah, this is more or less a normal line. I like to castle here, play f6, sometimes knight f5. I'll just castle here. In general, I don't think black has much to worry about in this line. Now I'm threatening to take on b4 because of the pin. Uh, I don't think he will get any attack. I'll, I'll just take it. Knight h5, go back. I think I always have knight g6. I mean, I, I could potentially become weak on the light squares. But since he passed, it looks like he, he just blundered the pawn. Okay. I don't have to... But I'll go back now. If I'm allowed, I will play knight f5, which will come with tempo on d4, and then play f6. That opens up my position nicely to finish development, get my queen out, play bishop d7. But most importantly, I'm, I'm just up a pawn. So f6 I will play, and take the queen. I mean, he has some play. It's it's not it's not completely easy. Bishop f five. I'm not worried about. I'll play bishop d seven. Is there some g four? Mm, I don't think so. G four. I think I always have knight h four. Let's just put the rook here. Queen g four. Very aggressive. Uh, should I take on d4? Knight takes d4, pawn takes, queen takes, bishop takes f5, rook takes, or pawn takes f5. Okay, the rook is hanging, I think I have the e5 there. And the queen is hanging. Okay, this is uh, this is not the ideal way to realize my advantage, but okay, worst case scenario if it doesn't work, I have three pawns for the piece. Maybe I could have played no nah, no nah, no, nah, it's okay. Let's not think about what I could have done. It's for us to look at afterwards. I missed that move. Hmm. I missed that move. But I can t play here. And once the queen takes, I'm attacking the knight. If he moves the queen back now, then I'm just doing fantastic. So most likely he will go like queen d1. And well, that prevents knight to b3. So probably I'll go with the knight to c6. Oh, 
Whoa, what? Okay, no, I'll take with the knight. And does he have any? Well, that just thanks the queen. Thank you very much. And I win! Yay! Actually, won a bunch of games in a row, so that's pretty nice. Okay, let's go for analysis of this game. Um, so let's go for live analysis. And I prefer to. Eventually, I'll, I'll get this. <laughs> okay. <coughs> so this is, of course, the French defense. I like to play that. Knight c3, the Vinovar variation, named after the Polish Simon Vinovar. Now the knight e2 line. I mean, it's a solid line. The idea is to take on c3 with a knight, not get a double pawn like white usually does. The main line is e5, c5, a3. White gets the bishop paired, but it does have double pawns. So knight e2 is a sideline. For those interested in alge algebraic notation, note it's knight e2, not knight g2, e2, because this knight is pinned and can't move. Many people write here knight g2, e2. Which technically isn't incorrect, but if you want to have it a hundred percent, it's knight to e2. Anyhow, oh, knight c6. This is what I always play. There are other lines, but let's not dwell on that. A3 is what they usually play. Kick the bishop back to b6, and now e5 closer in the center. Uh, there's also some people have to play g3, but overall I think black gets fine play, especially if we get the f6 break in. So my plan here, if he does nothing, is knight f5, uh, well castle is knight f5, and then f6 with pressure on d4. So he plays knight a4, a castle, he took on b6, now he has the bishop pair. And I agree that bishop g5 is probably a good move here because it prevents my main plan of knight f5 and f6. So what I should have played instead, he played knight f4, which is probably just a blunder. And I managed to realize that, utilizing that this pawn is pinned to the rook. Bishop to e2. And I said go back. Uh, what did the computer say? Yeah, I mean, there are some other other options, but probably best just to kick it back and you don't have to think about it. I was a little worried, though, that, like moves like knight h5. Uh, before he played bishop b2, like knight h5, queen c4. You know, there are some potential attacks on the black squares. In some cases, even bishop h6. So you have to be a little bit careful, but here I felt after knight f5, my problems are more or less over. I get this tempo. So I get to play f6, which really, it prevents any, like, I'm not going to be as weak on the, on, the, on the dark squares. I mean, any sacrifice now, I have my rooks to defend my queen. Uh, so there are no, like, sacrifices that can stifle my defenses. Or is it stifle? Stifle, stifle. The stifle tower. Bishop d3, bishop to d7. I mean, white has the bishop pair, so he has, I mean, some compensation, of course, but I should be better here. Uh, rook a8, probably not completely necessary, but okay, just adding protection here. Solid blitz move. Now, I needed to find something. My initial... Uh, instinct was to play g6 actually, but uh, didn't want to weaken my light squares. I also thought about king h8, but then I thought uh, I didn't want to worry about you know queen on h file and have to worry about some knight jumps here. So 
and I spotted this idea and, and went for it and I couldn't I couldn't really capture it but I felt like I had E5 at the end but I, it's probably just completely flawed yeah I, I think so let's see what the the computer completely dislikes it he went knight h5 but he should just take queen takes so i'm attacking the rook i thought i would have e5 uh but i just has bishop e3 i thought i thought because i have the knight but of course he takes with the pawn yeah so okay this was a flawed concept uh he can get away like this and okay still have three three uh pawns for the piece so it's not a disaster but it's not what i wanted so knight takes was not a good move so any of the above g6 or king h8 but okay i got off the hook i think with knight h5 although i missed the move but i wasn't away for turn that queen g6 uh, allows me if he if he takes I take with a pawn well why, why the arrows just do it attack this so I have time to get away with the knight uh, now I took an f5 which oh uh, hello hello oh I missed the tactic here I saw it in another line so uh, he takes f5 I'm hitting the rook hitting the queen doesn't have time to defend. If the queen goes to d1, I have knight f3 at the end. So if you defend, it'd be even immediately. Yeah. And then knight f3 wins. I should have seen that. I had seen the idea of you takes f5 in other lines. But okay. Uh, it's logical to go for this. Knight is attacked. I go back. I'm up two pawns. And the, this is probably a slip. In any case, uh, I mean, maybe uh, I'll probably e5 is my first instinct. Yeah, open up some discoveries, stifle this guy. This is just a winning position for black. So, I mean, plenty of mistakes, but we got the win. Road to 2500. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye bye.